Hello, my little mathematicians. Today, after we finish doing E22 and E23, you are going to be masters at inequalities. So let's go ahead and take a look. Remember, you can always pause the video, try it yourself, and then unpause it to come back with us. Okay. The first thing says, the essential question is, what are inequalities and how do you know what values for the unknown are the solutions? So let's go ahead and practice some of those. For number one, it says circle which number or numbers on the right fit the description. You want numbers that are less than five. Or if they were to write this as an inequality, it would say anything that is less than five. Okay, is three less than five? Yes. Is nine? No. Is 12? No. Is negative four? Yes. Is zero? Yep, that's less than five. Is 24? Nope, bigger. Is negative five? Yep, that's less than five. Is negative 20? Mm -hmm, that's less than five. And is 17? Nope, it's bigger. Okay, I'm sure a lot of you guys are now going to pause the video and go ahead and try these yourself because you're like, I got this. Number two says numbers that are more than three. So that would say X or any number is greater than three. Is three greater than three? No, it's not greater than itself. It's equal to it. Okay, is nine greater than three? Yes. Is 12 greater than three? Yes. Is negative four? Nope, it's smaller. Is zero? Nope, it's smaller. Is 24? Yep, it's greater than three. Negative five is less than three. Negative 20 is also less than three, but 17 is greater than three. Okay, the next one says that it wants you to circle all the numbers that are less than or equal to 12. So that would look like X is less than or equal to a line underneath 12. So is three less than 12? Yes. Is 9 less than 12? Yes. Is 12 less than 12? No. But is it equal to it? Yes. So this time I could circle it. I couldn't circle the 3 last time because it didn't have the line underneath. It wasn't including the numbers equal to 3. But this one is including the ones equal to 12. So I can circle the 12. Negative 4 is less than 12. 0 is less than 12. 24 is bigger. Negative 5 is less than 12. Negative 20 is less than 12. And 17 is bigger. Okay, for my next one, it says um, all the numbers that are more than or equal to negative 4. So all the numbers that are greater than or equal to negative 4 are the ones I'm going to circle. Well, 3 is a positive, so it's bigger than negative 4. You know what? All positives are bigger than negatives, right? So let's circle all positive numbers. Positive, 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 and positive. And zero is obviously bigger than a negative. Then we just have to decide about these. Okay, so negative four is equal to negative four. So I can circle that one. Negative five and negative 20 are tricky though. Think about it. Numbers that are bigger than negative four. So they're closer to being zero and positives, right? Well, this is actually further down the negative line. So this is smaller. Same thing with this. Because being bigger is having more positives. I'd rather owe $3 than owe $4, right? So negative 3 is actually greater than negative 4. And negative 5 is less than negative 4. So I didn't include those. If it's helpful, I sometimes draw a little sketch. And I put 0 here. And then 1, 2, and then negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4 negative five. And so it just shows me, okay, so if it's negative four or above, that's greater because it's getting towards positives. And the negative five, negative six, negative seven, and so on, those are actually smaller. So I wouldn't include those numbers. Don't be afraid to draw a little sketch of a number line to help you figure things out. Okay, for my next one, what is the symbol for less than? Less than, as we set up here, it's just like that. It kind of looks like a slanted L, a less than sign. Okay. And it's going to have an open circle. Okay. Open circle. Because it's not going to include that point when we graph it. Same thing with a 
greater than. Okay, it's also going to have an open circle when we graph it, but it's going to go the other way. Okay, think of the great big open end is facing your variable. We always want to have the variable on the left, and then the great big open end is facing it. Okay. If it's less than or equal to, then these are what's known as a closed circle, or they're shaded in, okay, like that. And this, it's still a less than sign, but now I have a line underneath because it's including that point as well. Just like when we did it up here, it said or equal to 12, so I included the 12. Um, or equal to negative 4, so I included the negative 4. But if it's an open circle, it's not including that point. So like right here, there was no line underneath, so I didn't include the 3. Okay, this one is more than, so it's a greater than sign. But or equal to means it's a line underneath because it would be including that point that it's talking about. And it would be a closed circle on the graph. So we would shade in the circle. Okay. What is an inequality? An inequality is a mathematical sentence. that compares, because that's what an inequality sign is, it's some, comparing something that's either less than or greater than to it, right? Two different expressions. Um, solutions to inequalities are all the numbers that could equal x, and make the inequality true. Okay, so when we're doing an equation, there's only one possible answer. But when we're doing an inequality, there's lots of possibilities. See all the possible solutions that we circled? Okay, so since there's so many different possibilities, we use it um, instead of just drawing with a graph, we're going to instead of just drawing with a graph, instead of just drawing a graph with just a circle, we're going to do open and close circles, and we're going to have rays extending in either direction. But we'll get there. First of all, let's just focus on what if they asked me a question like this. Okay. What if they said which values, and go ahead and write this down in your notes, okay, which values of x are solutions to the following inequalities. Okay. If it asked you a question like that, that would be the directions, and then it would give you an actual problem like this. It would say, okay, here's your inequality, x is greater than negative 4. And it wants to know which one of these are possible solutions. x equals negative 4, x equals negative 3, or x equals 5. Okay, and then a second example would say something like, uh, x is greater than or equal to negative 4. And what if x equals negative 4? Would that be a solution? or x equals negative 20, would that be a solution? Or would x equals zero be a solution? What you do is you substitute in the values for x and then see which one of those make a true statement. Okay, so let's go ahead and give those a try. So I'm gonna replace x with negative four, negative three, and five, okay? So then it would say x is greater than negative 4, or negative 4 is greater than negative 4. Negative 3 is greater than negative 4, and 5 is greater than negative 4. Which one of those are true? Is negative 4 greater than negative 4? No, it's equal to it, but not greater than it. So that's not a solution, okay? Is negative 3 greater than negative 4? Draw yourself a little number line to kind of help cheat a little, right? Negative 1, negative 2 negative three. So right here, negative four is further down. So negative three is closer to being positive. So yes, negative three is actually greater. I'd rather owe $3 than owe $4. So 
So that is true. So that must be a solution. Okay, is five greater than negative four? Obviously any positive is greater than a negative. So five would be a solution as well. Okay, why don't you try this one? Okay, you paused it. Now you unpaused it and you're back with us. Let's substitute in X for negative four, negative 20 and zero and see which ones made true statements. You had negative four is greater than or equal to negative four. Is it equal to itself? Yes, so that works. Is it greater than or equal to negative 20 though? Okay, is negative 20 greater than or equal to negative four? We'll just think about, it. go back to your number line, negative 20 would be over here. So this is actually less than something over here, right? So negative 20 is actually smaller. So no, that would not be a solution. Okay, um, I'd rather owe $4 than owe $20. So negative four is actually bigger or greater than negative 20. And then finally, is this a true statement? Is zero greater or equal to negative four? Yes, zero is further to the right, so it's bigger than negative four. So that would be a solution. Okay, that's how you would do it if it said, um, which one of these or which values are solutions to the following inequalities? You'd substitute it in and see which ones make a true statement. So why don't you go ahead and try these? Okay, so I would replace the D with a four and get four is greater than five. Is that true? Nope. This one I'm gonna replace X with a 12. Is 12 less than 14? Yes, it is. And a lot of you guys are right now like, how in the world can you keep track of the signs? Like you're saying greater than, less than. I can't, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna give you a hint. See right here, the great big open end should be facing, like the big alligator mouth should be facing towards what it thinks is greater, okay? So is four greater than five? No, okay? Here, it's the great big open end is pointing towards a 14. So is 14 greater than 12? Yes, it is. Okay, but when we read it, we read it left to right. So technically you read it as 12 is less than 14. Okay, so see how the little tiny end is pointing towards a 12? So 12 is less than 14. This one, R is negative 10. Let's replace it. Less than or equal to negative four. Is that a true statement? Okay, is negative 10 less than negative four? Well, yeah, it's further on the left, so that is a true statement. Okay, I'd rather owe $4 than owe $10, so negative four is greater than negative 10. Great big open end facing the bigger number. Okay, let's replace W with eight, and that M with a six, and this P with a negative three, and then finish the signs. Greater than or equal to three, that and a two and less than or equal to negative three. Okay, is eight greater than or equal to three? Yes, it is greater. Is two less than six? Yes, or if it's easier to say, you know, six is greater because it has the great big open end facing it than two, yes. Okay, is negative three less than negative three? No, but is it equal to it? Yes. And because it had that line underneath, I could include that value. Now that would be different if it asked, okay, is P less than negative three? And I substitute in a negative three and I say, is negative three less than negative three? No, it's equal to it, not less than it. So that line underneath totally mattered. Okay, because if the line was there, then yes, it includes the negative three. If the line wasn't there, then no, it's not including the negative three. So it's negative three is not less than it, it's equal to it. So see how it makes a difference? All right, let's go ahead and actually try to graph these on the number line, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the page to E23. Okay. And I want to graph r is greater than 5. So on my number line, my positives go to the right. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 going this way, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. We don't need to name them all. Going that way. Okay. 
So I draw my circle at the five. If there was a line underneath, it would be including that point and I'd shade it in. But there's no line underneath, so it's an open circle. Now I need to decide if my ray goes to the right or if it goes to the left. When your variable's on the left, you can kind of use that as your arrowhead. So think of it as like that, like that would be the arrowhead. So see how the arrow looks like it's pointing towards the right? And doesn't it make sense that it's saying R is greater than five, so it's all the numbers greater than five that are represented. So that would be six, seven, eight, nine, et cetera. All the numbers greater than five are represented in my graph. Okay, let's try the next one. The next one says um, negative one. So I would draw a circle there, but let's give some more numbers on my line. Okay, one, two, three, four, this way. So it's not a line underneath, so it's not including that point, which means it's an open circle. And then if that's my arrowhead, it would look like that, right? So it's going in that direction. Okay, or think about it. This is saying g less than negative one. Where are smaller numbers? To the left of zero, so going in that direction. Okay, this one, go ahead and number your number line. And you're gonna draw a dot at three, but this time there's a line underneath, so it's gonna include that three. So I'm gonna shade in my dot. So it's including the point of three and all the numbers, smaller or greater, what do you think? Smaller, where are smaller numbers? To the left or to the right? To the left. And since W, um, your variable is on the left, you could use the arrowhead trick and see how it serves as your arrowhead like this. So it'd be pointing that way. Okay, my next one. Let's go ahead and number my graph. Okay, and then at negative four, that's where I'm gonna draw my circle. There's a line underneath, so it's including that point. So I'm gonna shade it in. And then is that saying all the numbers greater than four or less than negative four? It's greater than, great big open end facing your variable. Okay, so where do numbers get bigger? To the right or to the left? To the right. So I'm gonna draw my arrow to the right. And again, your arrowhead kind of looks like that, right? Doesn't that arrow match this? This arrow matches this, this arrow matches that. All right, remember open circles, okay, that's an open circle, is a less than or greater than sign. A closed circle, okay, that's what a closed circle looks like, is a less than or equal to sign or a greater than or equal to sign, okay? For these ones, it does include that number as a solution. So for instance, if we look back at this example here, this one was underlined. So is negative three considered a solution? Yes, it is. Okay, if there's no line underneath, is negative three considered a solution? No, it doesn't include that point as one of the solutions. Okay, so an open circle does not include that particular number that you're graphing as a solution. It's only the numbers that are, you know, either to the right or to the left of it, okay? But if it's shaded in, then it's including that number and the numbers to the right. It's including that number and the numbers to the left. Versus here, again, if it's a open circle, it's only the ones greater than five, not including five. Only the numbers less than negative one, but not including negative one. Um, how do you know which way to draw the line? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this up for you to see. Okay, how do you know which way to draw your line? If the variable is on the left, okay, so variables on the left, the inequality sign is like an arrowhead. So see it like the arrowhead? So this matches the arrow of that it was going. Hopefully now if you weren't seeing it as I was showing the examples up there, now you can. Okay, but you can always pick um, several numbers to plug in and see that the numbers in which direction give you true statements. So right here, 
if you were to plug in, like, let's say um, one is one greater than negative four. Yes. So I'd want one to be included. So I'd go towards one. Okay. And is negative 20 a solution? Is negative 20 greater than negative four? Sometimes you may not know the answer to that question. So why pick one like that, right? Pick something that you actually do know the answer to. Like if you're comparing positives and negatives, why not pick positives? Because then you can always determine like, yeah, a positive is greater than a negative. All right. Um, you can only use the arrowhead trick if your variable's on the left. Notice how here the variable's on the right. So then if the variable's on the right, then just note that it's the opposite way. Okay, so instead of going to the right, then your arrowhead would be going to the left. So that arrowhead trick only works if the variable's on the left. The arrowhead trick only works if the variable's on the left. Okay, I wanna make sure that sinks in. If it's on the right, your variable's over here, then your little trick, just switch the direction of the arrow when you're doing your graph, okay? But these are still saying the same thing this is saying x is less than three. Three is greater than x, or x is less than three, right? The great big open end is still facing towards the three. All right, and the numbers that you're graphing is representing the variable, because the variable is saying all the possible answers that are less than three, so it's going to the left. The essential question says, what are inequalities and how do you know what values for the unknown are solutions? If X is on the left and the solution is greater or greater than or equal to, then you know the graph goes to the right, okay? Because greater numbers go to the right and follow the arrowhead, right? If the X is on the left and the solution is less than or less than or equal to, then the graph goes to the left because less than numbers go towards the left, okay? And if it's a less than, it's an open to the left. If it's a less than or equal to, it's a closed circle and to the left. And hopefully by now you guys are masters at inequalities. If not, um, we have some extra sample pages for you guys to do, do some extra practice, maybe rewatch the video because this is tricky till you get the hang of it. But once it clicks, you're gonna be so proud of yourself. I have faith in you.